I'm Dr. Michael Latola, And I'm Megan Strong. On today's Case of the Week, a sneak peek at our newest product, Bruxer Anterior. And we roll up our sleeves and get right back into the news to tell you about some bank robberies that went awry. And a viewer mail from my new favorite dentist who's still only a dental student. That and more on today's Chairside Live. Hey now, hello and welcome to episode 123 of Chairside Live. We've got an interesting case of the week. Oh my God, look who's here! Ah, I was going to say, that was kind of a flat entrance for yeah. this momentous show. I know, I can't believe you're back. Here I am. It's been like seven, seven eight, ma, nine seven, months. Yeah. Right now, have you had the baby? <laughs> Yes. Okay, because I she, didn't know. I thought maybe you had an extraordinarily long uh, gestation period, like uh, an, an elephant, which is seven wow, to eight months. That's rude, uh, but, octopus, um, yeah, octopi, sure. actually uh, will sit on their brood of eggs uh, for four and a half years. Did you just make that up? But no, the okay. longest uh, gestational period for a mammal is uh, the alpine salamander at 48 months. I'm uh, frighteningly familiar with the gestation that periods of many, strange. many I, different animals. I don't even want to know why. But yeah, no, um, Eden is seven months old, and um, I took some time off to enjoy her and right. spend some time uh, getting used to being a mom, which I haven't slept in a year. Right. Um, and I'm back, and I'm so excited. That's the biggest... Did you have that thing where, um, as you got towards the end, you thought, oh, I just can't wait to get... Um, this baby out so I can sleep again and then you realize that <laughs> that, right. that it's never gonna happen You're yeah. never gonna get sleep again. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I was towards the end. I'm like, okay Come on, please just come and then after I was like, oh my gosh, this is way more difficult Do you want to come back in for a second because <laughs> whew, That was that was difficult, but. right? And you think you want to leave the hospital and go home as soon as possible And you realize you should stay there for about two weeks Thank you. and let yes. them take her every night so you can right? sleep and recuperate oh my gosh. Got yeah. the rest of our lives to bond the first two weeks vastly overrated <laughs> in my in my opinion Well, it's great to have you back. Thanks. I can't tell you how many um, dental shows uh, I've been to where people say, where's Megan? Uh, did you guys have a fight? Did you break up? Did you catch her cheating on you with another dentist doing a show with them? And, yeah. uh, and that wasn't it. It was no. just that you were away. And I was glad you took um, some extended time because this is, you know, you only get one opportunity to spend those early, early days, you know, with her. And, uh, and, co and coming back for us is fantastic. So thanks for coming back. It's My a gain pleasure. for us, and I know the dentists are going to be happy about it as well. I'm back. So I know we got some news and some viewer mail from Megan a little bit later, but let's get started today with our case of the week. Okay, so for today's case of the week, I wanted to give you a sneak peek at our anterior Bruxer that we're launching at Chicago Midwinter. All right, thanks for watching. No, um, that's actually not it. This is the old uh, Bruxer. Um, you know, it's interesting, this really wasn't, this material wasn't designed for anterior crowns. Honestly, we designed it for, you know, lower first and second molars and dentists are the ones who started prescribing it farther towards the anterior and that's when we realized we're going to need to make this a little more translucent than it currently is. By the way, as you look at this, how else could you ever get 10 totally identical crowns? You know, in the old days, we would have to cut it back and layer it and there'd be slight variations if we were making crowns for like show models, for models that were gonna go to like the CDA uh, show for the exhibits. But now with CAD CAM technology, we can mill exactly the, uh, 10 times over the exact same file, looks exactly the same, put a little glaze on it, boom, it's done. And so you can literally get 10 identical crowns, which you couldn't do, of course, in the past. Um, and so Bruxer became an anterior material thanks to dentists kind of asking for it to be used more and more on anterior teeth. And um, in the beginning, it was a pretty opaque material, didn't have a lot of translucency to it. And as a result, it needed to become more opaque. So it's continued to become more opaque. Uh, today, if you look at all the anterior crowns that we make here at the laboratory, 44% um, are IPS Emax, which is a really good choice, and 31% our Bruxer, the regular old Bruxer like you see here, um, which it looks nice, but it, it doesn't look as nice as Emacs. And anterior Bruxer is set to change all of that. It's not as strong as this Bruxer is, but if you've ever cut off one of these Bruxer crowns, you know that it's got <laughs> more strength than it needs anyway. And so you'll be happy to know it's gonna be a little easier to cut the new anterior Bruxer off. 
um, but also by decreasing the strength and it's by manipulating the level of yttria that's in here to stabilize the zirconia oxide. Um, by manipulating that we've been able to come up with a material that is in fact more translucent that's being called um, anterior bruxer. Now this is a whole arch being made out of anterior bruxer and um, I don't want to switch uh, everybody over to this for all teeth because again if you look at traditional bruxer this is about 1100 megapascals of flexural strength and at a millimeter and a half thickness that's where we do the hammer test and you can hit it with the hammer onto the 2x4 and it doesn't cause the crown to break. This is uh, closer to the area of 600 to 630 megapascals of flexural strength. Um, compare that to Emacs at 360 to 400 megapascals of flexural strength. So it's stronger than Emacs uh, by about 40%, but about 40% weaker than the traditional uh, zirconia, the traditional Bruxer. So this is still a good material to use on posterior teeth, and you're going to want to continue to use this. Uh, but Bruxer anterior is really just being designed for anterior teeth and uh, that's when I would recommend that you use it. In fact, it's probably just going to become our default material where it gets used um, in the anterior and in the posterior. Uh, we would use the regular Bruxer material, I guess, I guess unless somebody really uh, said, hey, I've got a, you know, somebody here who's totally concerned with aesthetics. Let's do that. But I don't know how smart of a decision that would, uh, that would actually be. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to be happy with the uh, anterior Bruxer on the anterior and uh, the regular Bruxer in the posterior. So let's take a look at these two next to each other, if we can, and just see what we notice about the two. You know, if you've been using Bruxer at all, you're kind of familiar with that look uh, on the right. And these are essentially the same shades that you see here, but the difference in translucency, there's just a little more depth to this, and you can see how it uh, would probably be a little easier to use in the anterior and get away with and not have to worry so much to use this Bruxer crown. And I don't really, honestly, I don't use uh, that much traditional Bruxer in the anterior as it stands right now. Uh, I'm still using a lot of Emacs there, uh, but the anterior Bruxer stands to change all that. And because of the fact that uh, even though it's still plenty strong, you know, it's not as strong as this one, but it's still plenty strong, it's got that translucency and that depth to it that we don't see here. So I will use this in the anterior if we've got a patient who's broken previously existing PFM crowns. I'll use it if we've got a stump shade, for example, on a tooth. If this were an endodontically treated tooth or a tetracycline stained tooth, then I can use this uh, regular Bruxer uh, instead of Emacs. Uh, but as of today, most of the time I'm using Emacs in the anterior because it just doesn't break in the anterior. The posterior can be a different story if the dentist doesn't reduce enough. And Emacs is contraindicated in Bruxers, according to Iva Clark, and I tend to agree with that. And that's why Bruxer is actually a great material for people who Brux. And, and hence its name. Uh, but with the new, more translucent version of it, I'm going to find myself probably using it more in the anterior than I had been in the past because it does look better. And while it's not as strong as this one, it doesn't have to be as strong as this one because the bite force is average, you know, 210 newtons in the anterior, 540 newtons in the posterior. So twice as strong uh, in the posterior. So we don't see breakage with Emacs in the anterior and we won't see it with anterior uh, Bruxer either. So um, some of the doctors now who are, we've been working with who have been ordering anterior regular Bruxer crowns, we've been sending them one of these as well and say cement uh, whichever one you want to cement. And uh, nine out of 10 are, are cementing this one. A few of them uh, still want the strength because they say, oh, the, the patient's got some real worn down cuspid, so I want to go with the strongest one available. But most of the time, this anterior one's going to be plenty strong. So uh, end of February, we should see this product launch and you'll start to see some advertisements come around. And uh, I'm happy to say that as well as Bruxer has done in the posterior, we now finally have something that we think looks good enough to put the name anterior onto the product and feel like we can uh, uh, you know, have you prescribe it and use it in the anterior regions and not be worried about it. Like I said, you know, 31% of our dentists are already using the regular Bruxer in the anterior and not having any issues with it in terms of shade. Uh, but for me, I've still stuck for the most part with uh, Emacs and the anterior, but now looking at the Bruxer anterior and having been placing it in employees' mouths here for the last year and a half, I think you're going to see that this looks pretty darn good and it's good competition for other high strength cementable all ceramic crowns on anterior teeth. Thank you for that Dr. D. You're welcome. Now let's go to a segment we call Viewer Mail. 
Our first letter back comes from a dental student at Midwestern University in Phoenix, and his name is Jordan Colby, and he writes, Dear Dr. Detola, I wanted to thank you for coming to our school to lecture, and thank you for sharing the reverse crown prep technique with us and allowing me to try the burr block. Today was the second time I've used it, and I was amazed that my same hands were able to produce a much better prep, way better margins, and plenty of reduction to allow the lab to add the porcelain. Attached is the impression I took today. It is a lot of fun to see this improvement in dental school. Thank you again. I remember meeting Jordan when uh, I was out there. That was the last lecture I did um, last year in mid-December out at the dental school. And he had just written to me beforehand and said, I, I see you're coming out to uh, the school to speak to us. Um, I was wondering if you knew of anywhere where I could get that burr kit that you're going to be talking about. I saw the video online and I said, Jordan, uh, I don't, I don't know if they sell it to dental schools, to sure. be honest, but I've got a couple sitting right here on my desk. I'll, I'll bring them out to you. And so after the lecture, a bunch of students came to ask questions, uh, including Jordan. And so in front of this whole big group of students, I gave Jordan his burr kit mm -hmm. and everybody was like, do we all get one? I was right. like, no, Jordan took the time uh, to write and ask for it. And um, otherwise, you know, we probably could have done more. They're, they're not cheap, but he did send a picture and I'm going to appreciate this more uh, than you do, but mm -hmm. that is, that impression and that prep, you can tell it's done with the reverse crown preparation because of how uniform the margin is all the mm -hmm. way around there. I mean, it looks like it was done by a machine, which is my say. new nickname for Jordan, the, Jordan the Machine Colby. Colby. Yeah. Nice. Dr. Machine. Dr. Machine. All I've looked at lately are pictures of babies, but I have to tell you, that's a, that's a pretty looking prep right there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that is a pretty looking prep. I thought you were going to say that's a... Uh, for, even for a baby, that's pretty good looking because that right. is that shows great. Um, it, you would think it shows great hand-eye control, but Jordan seems to be admitting that he's got an average set of hands uh, like me, and so it's hard to tell if it is or not. But when you look at that from somebody who's still in dental school, it looks fantastic. You can see the flash of the impression material mm -hmm. uh, beyond the margin, and you can tell it's reduced enough because he used the depth cutters. It literally is better then 90, I'm gonna say 7% of the impressions that we'll receive today here at the lab from doctors who've been out of school uh, for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Now granted, he's got more time in dental school, you know, to prepare and sure. pack two cords and, and prep this crown than you do in private practice. But really the secret becomes, this is a foolproof technique that works for anybody. But once you do get busy in private practice, how do you incorporate this into having to work faster and still get decent results. But it absolutely can be done, but it sure helps if you can start with this and then work on getting faster right. versus on getting really fast and then trying to get better because that slows you down. And once you get fast, it's hard to slow down. So if you start like Jordan did uh, with really good habits in the beginning and then just figure out how to get faster and faster and faster, which happens anyway, it's like sure. running or anything else. Right. The more you do it, the faster you get. Um, Jordan's going to have uh, a lot of lucky patients because you can just tell by looking at this that, uh, that the kid gets it. He That's knows right. what he's doing and I expect nothing less from Jordan, the machine Colby. So way to go machine. You're like the human CAD cam when it comes to prepping teeth and I think you've got a long, wonderful future in front of you. Thanks for writing into us. We really appreciate it. And ironically, what do we have for him, Megan, for being the first uh, viewer mailback after our extended layoff. Well, because I know, whoops. Well, don't I, bury the lead. Sorry. <laughs> I know. Which is, it's another burr kit. You're giving him another one? Yes, that's what happens. That's what happens. You know how celebrities in Hollywood get everything for free even though they can afford it swag, more than most people? Swag, stuff we all get. Yeah, they totally get a <laughs> lot of swag and they expect to get everything for free even though they can pay the most. Same thing here. You know, Jordan doesn't probably need this anymore, but he's getting it anyway. Right, and you know what? He can, he, probably all the other students are coming up to him saying, hey, can I get one of those like right. they saw? Swag me up, dude. Swag me up. But and they won't care about this. What the other students will want is this. Is this photograph. Wow. Now you look to be, I'll say this, the horizontal stripes are thinning, but still you were with child at this point. I was were you absolutely, not? I was very much with child and the child was about to not be inside of me anymore. I was like nine months pregnant. You I were, think. you were, you can see, you could see it more if you could see if the desk wasn't there because I remember you had a hard time scooting in. I did. And I, it looks like I, um, unpacked the, uh, peanuts from my cheeks. 
Yes, well, you were carrying parts of the baby in your cheeks and the other parts uh, in your womb. But yeah. uh, for the dentist who, who can't tell, I, I just want to say that you look fantastic today. You've, you, mu you must be the kind of woman that your friends are really angry at because it looks like you've already lost just about all the weight. Well, thank you. I have. Um, exercise it's hard work yeah but also Eden has some food intolerances and mm -hmm. so my diet has been kind of modified so like dairy I can't have I don't even want to talk about oh, it wow. actually it brings a tear to my wow. eye wow all the ice yeah. cream talk we used no, to have on the show right? that's all gone no ice cream no butter no cheese and so just cutting that out right will help and then breastfeeding actually burns 500 calories a day oh I thought you were gonna say an hour no. a day that's pretty good yeah I think I have time for that. I think okay. I could work that into my schedule yeah, and burn so an extra 500. I'm sorry. No. But yeah, so we're going to um, sign this and send it on out. We are. I'm going to sign it to the machine. Colby. Colby. And we will sign that and get that off to you. So thanks again, Colby, for sending that in. And Megan, you have any news for us today? I do. A California dentist, known as Dr. Leo, was recently arrested and is being charged for allegedly torching two rival dental practices, according to police. It all started when maintenance workers found large amounts of flammable liquids on the roof of a dental building just down the road from Dr. Leo's office. Two weeks later, the roof of another dental practice was set on fire. Then three more arson attempts on those same buildings in the following weeks. Finally, Dr. Leo was caught on camera as he set fire to the first building. Investigators say the motive was partially financial as some of his patients were leaving him for the other dentists. Dr. Jordan, the machine. Mm -hmm. Dr. Leo, the felon. The felon. It's a sad story. He does not get a bird kit from us. He doesn't. And, he, and an arsonist, really? I know. That's... You're going you're gonna to set, instead of improving your practice, maybe improving your marketing or right. whatever to reach more potential patients, you're going to set the other people on fire. Yeah, we've always joked that there's really not that much competition in dentistry per se. Right. I mean, we're really competing with, uh, like veneers, for example. You look at veneers. For the last seven years, veneers have been coming down since the last recession. And last year, they went up a tenth of one percent here at the lab. Um, and so maybe that's the bottom and they're going to start creeping back up. But porcelain veneers, it's not that it's not that patients are going to other dentists, it's that patients aren't spending the money on porcelain veneers and they're spending that six, seven, eight thousand dollars either on nothing or maybe on vacations or smaller, less expensive vacations. Right. And so it's not that they're not doing veneers because dentists are having to compete. Competition is when you open like the Sunday paper and the paper where I grew up used to list like uh, Albertsons and Ralph's and Savon's and if you're really old, Alpha Beta, uh, all the different stores and then how much they charge for like Minute Maid 12 ounce frozen orange juice, you know, to wow. the penny. And so they just lined them all up and that doesn't happen for dentists. I mean, Yelp has changed things a little bit, but. The competition that we face largely in private practice is with disposable income and creating enough value for these procedures, the patients will have them done. I really doubt burning down other dentist's office is going to cause a flood uh, of patients to come seeking treatment from this guy, especially if patients were already leaving. There's a reason they were leaving. Right. So I, I just, I'm just glad he was caught. Um, I guess they, there was a a uh, pickup truck at late at night in the office or in the parking lot of right. the office and the, someone reported it and so they were kind of watching it and then they caught him on camera. Right. So it's just... You weren't here for this. This was while you were on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Wednesday watch people came and set our studio on fire while you were gone. And uh, luckily producer James caught it early and was able to put it out. But uh, it was it was dicey. <laughs> Fortunately, no one was here when that happened. Thank you, James. Big shout out to you for making sure. So that's going to happen with rival crews sometimes. But really, Wednesday watch, we're not in competition with each other. We all, each have our own audiences. And together, you know, the sum is greater than, uh, than the sum of the parts. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. What I kind of <laughs> wanted to say, to say that didn't come out wrong. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks for that. Anything yeah. else? A former dentist in California was recently arrested for robbing a bank, according to the FBI. He's known as the Rolled Sleeve Bandit, and he's responsible for at least six bank robberies over the past three months. During one of the robberies, the ex-dentist passed a note to the teller saying he had a gun and to hand over cash, and he left with about $4,000. And this man is no stranger to trouble. He's been arrested multiple times for prescription drug fraud, as well as for grand theft and not having enough money to cover checks worth more than $25,000.
After serving jail time for his many offenses, his license was revoked in 2014. Oh, and oh, you oh, caught what? you caught me. Red-handed, red forearmed. Red forearmed. I'm the roll. Did you see the pictures? This is what he was I know. wearing. The rolled sleeve. By the way, you need some lotion on those. I arms. do need to. I know. I was in okay. the pool all morning for for an hour and a half, and the chlorine got to my skin. But all right. the rolled. I like how casual the rolled sleeve guy right, is. Right. Like I mean, okay, whatever. Why? But the the point of this story that or the fact of this story that really gets me the most is Laguna Niguel is where he was practicing before right. his license was revoked. And I looked up the practice, mm -hmm. and it happens to be a stone's throw from my home. Really? Literally, like, I, you, I could walk there in five minutes. Is he, um, so the practice is still there, but he's not there because he lost his license? Um, I mean, I don't know if he actually, if the, if the practice is still there or whatever, but I, the, where it was right. is honest to goodness, like right down the street from my house. And the Yelp reviews are great dentist, just don't understand why I have to look at his forearm hair. Right. Why is he, he's doing dentistry with his sleeves rolled up. He like, Obama does that. Have you noticed like every picture of Obama, he's got the sleeves. He's trying to look relatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to look like Relaxed. an everyman. Uh -huh. uh, Joe Lunchbox, all these right. stupid other terms. Joe uh -huh. Six Pack, you know, for the average American. But I like to do it too. It makes it look like you're about to get some heavy lifting done. Right. Get something done. I was with Gordon Christensen yesterday. He had his rolled up. And that was the first thing I thought, knowing you're going to do this story. Oh, I'm no. like, the thief. It's Gordon yeah. Christensen. There it is, I all could. Along. <laughs> he decided to trade away this entire career and empire of his, uh, CR, to uh, to steal some money. But right. um, I do like doing this a lot. And I thought I had to think back. Was it wasn't me? But it wasn't. But the rolled Good. up sleeve guide, uh, they did catch him, and uh, yeah. he's going away for he a is. long time. And um, what's interesting too, though, is you mentioned the Yelp reviews, and uh, I went on to his Yelp, and I was looking, and most people were complaining, saying that they paid up. For, sorry. Whoa, that was crazy. They paid up front for services and then he never delivered he would oh. never bring them in and do it and so and then a lot of people and that was like review after review after review saying we gave this man thousands of dollars up front and then he still hasn't put braces on my child right yeah, he was GP who used to do a little orthodontist he was not an orthodontist as originally reported but he did a lot of Orthodontics, and that's one of the easiest things probably in dentistry, I guess, if you're going to defraud somebody is to, uh, you know, get payment up front. Although orthodontics is typically paid over the months, uh, but they weren't giving him enough. He still had to go right. roll up his sleeves, get to work, and rob the bank. Crazy. Well, Megan, uh, it's fantastic having you back. Thank you. It was you. boring doing the show alone. Um, I'm sure. I'm we pretty stopped much doing the life it. of the I party. I know. I took a sabbatical of my own. Uh, congratulations. I hear you're already with child again. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not? That must have just been a rumor. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, they call, I've been back for like a day, people. Relax. They call know? that Irish twins. My brother and I are 14 months apart. Wow, so really? So that means getting pregnant five months after giving birth. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, my friend actually just got pregnant and when her daughter was two months old. Really? Yep. Bless her heart. Wow. I didn't even know that was physically possible. I didn't either. That's yeah. that's nuts. Yeah, try to space them out a little I bit. I am. More than no, that. there's no plan. Shooting for like two years. Oh, there's not even a plan yet. I mean, there's a plan, but okay. it's not for a while. Don't share it. I want to be surprised. Okay. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for this edition of Chair Side Live. On behalf of myself, the newly returned Megan, the whole CSL crew, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. Guess who's back? The baby's back. During one of the robberies, the ex-dentist passed a note to the teller. To teller, start over anyway, so you're fine. That's a wrap. And the wrap party. And together, you know, the sum is greater than uh, than the sum of the parts. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. What I.